Number six on the list is banking. So while you're taking the time to look over your cards and make sure none of them are expired or about to expire or lost, <laughs> um, you definitely are going to have to do your research in banking. Now, one of the things that I found when I got here was that it's kind of impossible to do anything without having a bank account. What South Africans tend to do is run a lot of different services through their banking platforms. One of the companies that I was able to find that gave me an account prior to getting or moving to South Africa or even obtaining my uh, temporary residence visa was FNB Bank. Okay, so it's something called a non-res account. I was actually or non-resident account. I was able to actually go online and fill out the application do all the information through either online portal or email now with that being said let me warn you sometimes things are not the easiest to communicate with the customer service representatives because even though you're speaking English it's a little bit different so you want to keep your communications very direct less wordy especially for somebody like me and just be very to the point also keep in mind that if you are in the states i know on the east coast you're going to be seven hours behind if you're on the west coast say la far west coast you're going to be 10 hours behind so nine to eight hours behind give or take in the middle so you definitely want to keep that in mind when you're sending your communications. Usually what I would try to do is anything that I wanted to, to work on the following day, I would stay up late and send those communications or at least make sure, say, by 10, 11 o'clock Eastern time that they were in. So either if I stayed up late until, say, 12, 1 o'clock in the morning, it would be about 8 o'clock in the morning here. Um, and again, that was East Coast time so that I could start getting answers or at least by the time I woke up in the morning in the States, I would be able to have some sort of communication and be able to respond to them to keep that volley going. That is definitely going to be a big adjustment for you as well as for your family. Making sure that you get all of that information into them as they ask, setting up your portal making sure that you begin communicating with your banks that are at home any information that they need to set up wire transfers i know that there is a service with zoom x o o m that's through paypal that allows you to send wire transfers from your account in the states over into south africa you are going to fill out some sort of form usually every year sometimes it's every couple of months it seems like because they want to check and make sure that you have the appropriate type of documentation and that you're not embezzling money or something. That's also something that's a really big deal here in South Africa. They definitely want to make sure that you're keeping track of everything that you're doing and you're not doing anything shady because apparently um, there's been history of that in the past. So definitely make sure that you get all of that paperwork straight in, communicate all of that information with your bank set up everything, find out how much your um, fees and everything are going to be, the time frames it's going to take to get money there. Because once you get to South Africa, you're actually going to have to adjust to the fact that you're not going to be able to just get money right away. I mean, usually within 24 hours or so, you could do a uh, transfer from your U.S. account to here. But also remember the time difference. So you may be able to get the next day, but maybe not until after close of business. So if you're trying to take care of something and you don't want to only get maybe like 68 cent to the uh, a 68 cent conversion rate, you definitely don't want to just be taking money out at the ATM because it's, it's going to make you lose and you're going to wind up having a fit because you can't do what it is you need to do. Um, this segment's a little bit longer than the others, but it's actually really important. And I'll probably do another video that's a little bit more in depth about banking. But another thing that you want to understand is that when you get to South Africa, if you do not already have your temporary residence permit, you're still going to be stuck in a non-res account. So while you're going to be able to um, put money into the account and send money out of the account, 
you won't be able to get money from other sources in South Africa into that account. So make sure you have all your paperwork underway. And definitely, if you have any specific questions, comment, and I'll be sure to try and answer them as best I can.